Hi, Scott Melvin here from New York City, Montefiore Medical Center. I've been asked to talk about the rise and fall of the Streter procedure, a procedure that's been around for a long time and I've fortunately uh, been involved with uh, quite a bit. As a matter of business, I have a, only a disclosure that I'm a, a, a consultant uh, for Stryker Corporation. A patient with reflux can be a challenging patient and has multi-dimensional symptoms and objective or subjective evidence of significant gastroesophageal reflux. But why do we care how we manage it? One, I think, is for patient satisfaction. Obviously, we want patients to feel better. And the other is to objectively prevent uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease and sub subsequent esophageal cancer. Strata is a new minimally invasive treatment uh, for the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, I want you to notice that this slide comes from the Curon Medical Center, and it said that it was uh, from a new procedure. This is from the year 2000, more than 20 years ago. Strata is an outpatient endoscopic procedure. The placement of a catheter uh, occurs endoscopically at the gastroesophageal junction. Radiofrequency energy is applied at multiple cycles uh, throughout the distal esophagus and the proximal stomach, and then a repeat endoscopy is performed. The total time is about one half hour. Few complications have been recorded, and many, many clinical trials uh, have been published with a variety of results that we'll go through. So, there we see or here we see how this performs. Normally a balloon is inflated in the distal esophagus and then needles are inserted into the esophageal wall over an array of the different lengths and different sites within the proximal stomach and the distal esophagus to create a web of nodes around the distal esophagus to help decrease reflux disease. This is really an artifactual cartoon because it doesn't create this much thickening or fibrosis. Let's go back to the year 2000, 20 years ago. This was developed by a, a uh, otolaryngologist surgeon at Stanford University. It was first studied uh, both in the ex vivo lab and then brought to the in vivo lab in a porcine model. Patients were treated with RF energy after they had developed reflux secondary to Botox. There were no adverse events. And nine weeks after Botox and then treatment, the LES pressure had increased gastric yield pressures increased, and pathology demonstrated normal mucosa, mild fibrosis, and no stricture. Certainly there appeared to be justification for human trials, partly because of safety. And of course, that carried on. A year later, a multi-center uh, trial was performed with selected patients. 47 patients were subjected to therapy, all had reflux, and symptoms improved. Good quality of life improved, pH improved, and 87% of, of patients were off medicine at six months. In selected patients, this seemed to work. I should also note that in the year 2000, FDA approval was granted for the Strata procedure for radiofrequency energy to be delivered to the lower esophageal sphincter, in part because radiofrequency energy had been used in a variety of settings to provide contraction, uh, nerve uh, ablation, and other factors. Why does it work? Several studies quickly followed. In this canine study, motility and pH was measured and histology was gathered at seven months. The, the ambulatory pH and the motility really demonstrated less transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxations. And remember that transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation is inappropriately, is probably the mechanism of reflux in a lot of people with um, normal anatomy. Perhaps this was a mechanistic explanation. At Ohio State, uh, when I was there, uh, we looked at 50 patients referred to a surgical practice. We excluded all the patients with hiatal, with hiatal hernias. Heartburn scores, overall satisfaction scores uh, were improved significantly. And we did see symptom relief. pre strata and post strata the overall heartburn score improved. Overall symptom satisfaction score improved. And we concluded that this was effective in reducing symptoms in a significant number of patients. Throughout my talk today, we'll talk about the economics and the economics of this are really important. As I said, this, this device was approved by the FDA in the year 2000. 
Based on input from many practitioners and many people, including SAGE's member, a CPT code was assigned in 2004. But yet the fact that the CPT code was assigned does not mean that insurance paid for it. And most insurance companies, led by several gastroenterologists, uh, denied, denied um, payment and denied coverage for Streta. Subsequently, Curon, Curon Medical, the company that was uh, marketing this, went bankrupt in December 2006. So that was the hiatus. During this time, Strata's, Strata was not used. Not the hiatus of the esophagus, but the hiatus of being away from product. The technology was acquire, acquired uh, before 2010, and it was relaunched in 2010 by Madiri Therapeutics. It's currently available for wide worldwide clinical use, and obviously the data collection has increased. So we looked at long-term data, and the long-term data was not conclusive. In our study, our 50 patients who were initially referred for surgery, many came back and underwent anti-reflux surgery. But about 40% who had initial results had durable results that lasted for a long time. It was difficult for us to pick out why some patients got better and why other ones didn't get better. Obviously, other studies that followed on us uh, looked at long-term data. 108 patients with four-year follow-up. Medication usage decreased but GERD quality of life scores and heartburn scores significantly improved. Another study where medication was more strictly controlled, not only did symptom score improve, but also medication usage decreased significantly. The long-term data showed reasonable uh, resilience and reasonable endurance of the procedure. As time went by in 2012, we published a meta-analysis looking at many of the studies and hundreds and hundreds of patients that had been captured into, um, into a variety of clinical trials. Looking at the outcome measures that are variable, GERD quality of life scores, heartburn scores, satisfaction scores, a Demeester score, uh, as well as manometry and looking at, at pH studies showed that in many situations, pH was improved as well as satisfaction scores and patient satisfaction scores without a significant increase in LES pressure or significant change in the manometry. Now, obviously this meta-analysis are always subject to interpretation, as was this. A year later, uh, Dr. Richter and his group came out with the said there was no evidence of efficacy of radiofrequency energy. And their systematic review that cherry-picked several studies demonstrated out of four trials, evaluated 153 patients, there was no improvement compared to sham or PPI. There was no change in pH or HRQL or the health-related quality of life, heartburn-related quality of life. So we still didn't know the answer. We looked at the long-term cost effectiveness in our group. Markov modeling was used to evaluate the fact whether an individual who given long-term medicine or have had an intervention um, or had cheap drugs or expensive drugs, what was more uh, cost effective. And while PPI cost was quite variable, uh, most of the time PPI cost favored an intervention for the treatment of reflux. Another long-term study from China demonstrated 138 patients with a minimum of five-year follow-up. Many patients were off PPIs. Most patients were satisfied with the outcome. And importantly, I think, is there were no adverse events related to the disease, to the treatment. Let's go on to talk about the economics. Madiri. Madiri was marketing this. Uh, market share was increasing. Usage was increasing. It was acquired by ResTech in 2018. Madiri, as I think as a division, continues on. Uh, it's continued to be marketed by Madiri. And insurance coverage uh, continues to grow, uh, but it remains variable. In U.S., international insurance coverage appears to be growing. Uh, China is now covered since 2017. And there's been new positive coverage in the U.K., the Mexico, and other places. Despite this, many Blue Cross Blue Shield programs, United Healthcare, continue to deny coverage for strata procedure, despite that it's still working. It's currently the least invasive therapeutic maneuver for GERD, but it's widely used and widely practiced, partly in fact, because it has such an excellent safety profile. Its distribution is in more than 40 countries and usage is difficult to determine exactly, but at least 400 to 500 per month. It's always good to look at spotlights, or I mean, to look at, uh, at uh, reviews and society guidelines. Difficult because they lag so far behind. But in, here in 2013, Streta was considered appropriate therapy with good level of evidence and a strong recommendation. 
different than the end, other endoluminal therapies. The American Congress of Gastro College of Gastroenterology had different ideas. They said that surgical therapy uh, is recommended for patients with significant disease, but uh, there was no evidence for uh, conditional recommendations for the use of endoscopic therapy or transoral incisionless fundoplication. So as we approach the end of our time, what's the bottom line? Obviously, for most patients who have mild reflux, PPIs are reasonable. Mechanical reconstructions or other endosco endoscopic uh, approaches may seem reasonable. Transoral fundoplication may be promising as the data continues to accumulate. But STRET is currently available, and the data suggests good symptom control in many patients. We know that the LINX provides excellent early results, and that laparoscopic Nissen is still a very good, with 90% good success rate in selected patients. I choose Strata for patients who have normal anatomy, minimal to moderate reflux, or minimal to moderate reflux after a Nissen fundoplication, because I know that in many patients with very little risk and very little risk of causing further complications, we can improve their symptoms and improve their symptom control. And that's what I'm really after in time. While drugs work, I think that we ought to look at other ways to help manage our patients off medicines. Thank you for your time. I don't think we're taking questions today. Stay safe and have a good summer.